Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to review the most requested program that I've ever had on this channel, and that is Grayscore. Now, funnily enough, I had never heard of that program in the past. I never ran it, and therefore I discovered it when I started uh, actually studying the program for this review. But it seems to be extremely popular in the world of YouTube fitness. And that is already interesting because it clearly states in the program that it is mostly a powerlifting program, meaning that it is focused around strength progression. That being said, of course, since so many people run it for hypertrophy, just like starting strength or, uh, of, uh, or any type of novice program in reality, then it is fair for me to review it as such. So I'm going to review the Grayskull program and see how good it really is. From what I see here, this was actually created as a response to the other novice programs that tend to be suboptimal. So it's, it should be better than them to start with. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, considerations to take into account here, none of which I'm going to actually cover, because if you want to do the program yourself, you're going to have to put in some research, because the author has included some words of caution and some best practices to follow. So let us get us straight into the program, because... As I often say, a program stands on its own legs, meaning that I don't need to read the biography of the author to know if the program is good or bad. I just need to look at the program and the variables. So let's do it. Monday, bench or press. Two sets of five, one set of five plus. So I suppose that the plus is an additional set that you can add. Or potential backup sets. First off, um, I'm not going to say that this is poor writing because it of course is poor writing for a program, but I'm getting the program from a third party on a different website, so it's not the program's fault. But from what I know, these are from the original forum thread, so it's what I have to work off from. So, you start your Monday with a press. That's good. Excellent. You start with a compound movement. Bench or press? Hmm. All right. So I don't know what that means. Bench or press? So do you alternate every week? I have a small problem with that. A problem that you will see gets fixed afterwards. But if it was bench or press, this can create a problem because if you end up having to pick between overhead press or barbell bench press, it can create a lack of volume down the line. Here, it's not going to happen because the bench is really prioritized on the training program. So you start with this. And you do two sets of five, I suppose, which is good. Two sets of five is not terrible. Three sets of five could also be good. Or one set of five. One set of five is also good. That being said, it's low volume. And this is the reason why I think they added a plus, because you can do more sets if you want. Here, the easy fix was just to do, do an evolving rep range. Do an evolving set or rep range. Do either a three by five with a few back of sets, or you do a you know, a one to three set of two to five reps. That takes care of business. And on the days where you get the minimum amount of reps, you do your back of sets, maybe two back of sets, maybe three back of sets. For the press, either via the horizontal or vertical plane. After that, you do curls. Two sets of 10 to 15. All right, not a fan of that. Because 10 to 15 is the type of rep range that helps you accumulate a lot of volume, but it's not really close to any relevant intensity window in a sense. I also know for a fact that a lot of people are going to pick weights that they can easily rep for 15 because they're going to go for the pump. I would correct that and say curl 3 to 4 sets of 6 to 10 or 8 to 12. That would already be much better. And of course, the curls are standalone here. I'm not surprised. They should be superseded with something. There's no point in just doing curls and then being on your phone. So superset the curls with the press. What do you think it's going to do to you? It's going to, oh, you're going to lose 15 pounds on the press? No, nothing's going to happen. So do it. Superset it. Saves your, it's going to save you time. Then you do squats, two sets of five. And then I do believe that what they mean is you do two sets of five and then one set of five. But what doesn't that just mean three sets of five? Confused. See, that's already a problem because people are going to tell me, oh, you're supposed to read the program. Well, okay, but a lot of people are just going to be getting the template. They won't get like the 15 panels of text that are going to supposed to that are supposed to explain to you what, what you're supposed to do here. 
So I'm not really certain even what that means. It's not a terrible rep range by all means, uh, but it's vague. And the issue is that novices, if something is vague and novices can misinterpret it, they're going to misinterpret it. So that's a problem. After that, neck harness. Okay, so neck isolation at the end. That is a strange day. I don't know how you feel about this, but it's a really strange day. So you do press, then you do curls, then you do squats. So you do squats at the end already. I'm not sure why you should have the squat at the very start. Prioritize the squat. It's the most strenuous lift. Then the neck harness is sort of random. So if I were, if I was forced to reorganize this, <clears throat> what I would do is just start with the squat, superset it with the neck harness, and then do your bench or press and superset it with the curls. But is it really something that is supposed to replace starting strength? Because like this is still really minimalistic and it's not that different from starting strength at all. It's not terrible. I'm not saying it's terrible, but it's eh. I'm going to take a quick break to drink some water. Okay, so let's see what day two has in store because I wasn't impressed by Monday. Wednesday. Start again with bench or press. So, a strong focus on repetition, specificity, so it, it's it's a staple of any powerlifting program in reality because yes, you want to practice the standard bench press or the press to get strong at it. Issue is, for someone who just cares about looks, it's not necessary. You could be doing push-ups, you could be doing dumbbell bench instead of just doing bench all the time because a lot of people end up getting shoulder problems from benching flat all the time. But the thing, and that's the reason why I said that the bench or press dichotomy is not so bad, is because it's complementing itself. So if you bench on Monday, you're pressing on Wednesday. So you will never be benching three times a week. That is good. It also means that sometimes we'll be pressing two times a week. That is a problem because it also means that some weeks you only get one bench day. And that is not enough. Because the, it's, it's interesting to see that the program fails at doing what it's trying to do which is, have you bench often? Because sometimes you bench once a week. So even my novice program, which is really not focused on the bench at all, has more horizontal pressing volume most of the time than this program. And that is an issue because this is called tonnage fluctuation. And from what I see, it's completely, it's uncontrolled. It's random. The variable is not really static. And that is an issue because novices are not going to understand why their strength stagnates on certain weeks or even regresses. So the rep range, I have nothing to say. It's not terrible. Then you do weighted chins. Okay, great. That's, that's an improvement over starting strength. It has you focus on vertical pulls. Excellent. Two sets of six to eight. I actually like that rep range. It is good. Intent, still a certain amount of volume. You could be doing three sets if you wanted. And they also say, excellent, that it's only if you can do at least six to eight bodyweight chains. I agree, once you can do eight clean bodyweight chains, you can start loading it. So, good. It shows a good understanding of calisthenics, which a lot of powerlifting programs seem to lack completely, because they only have you do planks. Then you do deadlift, one set of five. With or without power cleans as a warm-up. So you see... The mentality of starting strength is still infecting this program because why on earth would you include power cleans in a novice program? I'll make a full video about Olympic lifts, but these are not lifts that are accessible to beginners. And on top of that, for hypertrophy's sake, there's really no point, meaning that it's a waste of time. Just do deadlifts. Uh, the problem I have here is that the deadlifts happen at the third rank of the program which is no bueno. You want the deadlift to open the program always. You want to be the freshest for when you deadlift. Same logic with the squat for Monday. And on top of that, I don't like the deadlifts being here. That's not necessarily true, actually. If there was a spot for the deadlifts to take place in a three-day program, the Wednesday is not a terrible day, so I take that back. But in a perfect world, you would open with the deadlift, you would do your one set of five. That's excellent. You can do back off sets afterwards. I really like three by three for back off sets for deadlifts. Then you do your neck harness as a superset of the deadlift, because why not? Then you do your bench, and you could even superset the bench and the weighted chins if you wanted. So that's your Wednesday. The Wednesday is, is much better than the Monday, in my opinion. And then the Friday. The Friday is just a copy of the Monday. So that's also a problem. 
even though you want to reduce the amount of variability and just um, uh, variation and just lift, ro lifting rotations in novice programs, you still want a tiny bit of it. So for me, there is no excuse for having two mirror days in a program because one, it's boring, two, it's not necessary. You could have some variation. Instead of having bench or press, you could have dumbbell bench or dumbbell press. Instead of doing just straight up curls, you could have the guy do preacher curls. It's still, it's still a curl, it's still going to grow the arm. You have squats, why not a variation of the squat? Why not a post squat here, etc., etc. So as I said, it's a program that is supposed to revolutionize novice programs, at least that, that was the goal when it was created, but it doesn't do it entirely. It's still a bit reluctant. It's still trying to be close to its parent, which is starting strength. So there's a lot of problems with it. But let's be fair, back from when it was created, it was a revolution. A few of the steps taken by this program are actually in the right direction. So that's that for the program. As you can see, still very minimalistic, but that's okay to an extent. Focused on compound movement, so that's good, but there's still a lot of things that are being forgotten here. There's no trap isolation, there's no form isolation, there's no calf isolation, there's no ab isolation. That is critical, especially the ab isolation. A lot of novices, they just want a six pack. Give them a six pack. Yes, squat and deadlifts are going to build your core, yes. But you also need to stretch those abs, to isolate those abs. And therefore, this is missing in the program. And the program is clearly trying to get you to get as much work as possible in and get as much tonnage in. But the issue is that when you do that, you do only compound movements. There's no work for the long head of the tricep. There's no work for certain portions of the back, etc. So, one, if I were to advise you a different type of program, check out the programs that I make. I think they're better. And two... If you want to absolutely do great score, the way I would modify it is, one, add pull-ups at least for another one of these days, so either Monday or Friday, body weight, you don't need to weight them, add some ab isolation, add some calf isolation at the end of the, the, the training day. You do supersets until you can't do it anymore. I guarantee you it's going to be uh, and make a great difference. You could add some shrugs here and there. For example, something super simple. After your one point, after your uh, your five uh, reps of deadlifts, lower the weight and just do shrugs for like three or four sets, and you'll get good results from that. There's also no direct shoulder isolation. You could throw in some lateral raises somewhere in the program; it wouldn't kill you. Okay, a lot of things. This is a skeleton, in my opinion, meaning that it's not bad, even though, as I said, I would reorganize some of the days, but. It's like something you would use to make your own program. So if you are someone who's learning how to program and you're wanting to make your own, that's a decent skeleton to go off of. Meaning that you should do, run this program for a while, for like three, four, five, six months, with the modification I told you to do, and then go on the programming playlist and follow the steps I give you in the three videos I make and make your own program off of this. Because this in reality is a skeleton. I know it's going to maybe rub some people the wrong way. This, to me, cannot be called a program. It's a skeleton of a program. It needs to be added upon, but it cannot be considered the finished version of anything. And maybe that's the goal. Maybe that's what's intended. The person who created that program wanted you to build upon it. And I know a lot of people would do that. So in this sense, it does do a good job, even though I would still, as I say, reorganize the day, add the supersets, and also add some variations. But that is so still, if we're going to talk about novice programs, not terrible, it is decent. And therefore it is something that you could actually follow and make good gains off of, because you would make gains off of anything. But don't stay at this level, go beyond, okay? Program by yourself and modify this as much as your heart desires. I'm going to leave you with that, because it's a relatively small program, it's not, super complicated to understand so any novice can grasp how to modify it by themselves but if you have any question let me know have a good day